Hello guys, this is Donald Movies, and today I got the first video in the new series. So, I've done these RP guides for pretty much every day, so it took me a few months, and I have briefly covered all of the classes, and since all of those videos are doing pretty good, and a lot of people are really into RP, and I've been getting a lot of requests to do just class specific videos, I finally decided to get on it, so I will try to do one of these videos every week. And I kind of want to do them in order for people, for example, if they pick an orc shaman, they can watch the orc video and then watch the shaman video and kind of bind those two videos together and get their perfect character. Now, we obviously have to start somewhere, so as you can see from the title, let's start with the shaman. So, no one really knows when shamanism began and how did all of the races establish a spiritual connection with the elements from all the worlds. But what we do know is that Azeroth isn't the only world, and as far as we know, there may be shamans from many different planets. So the current two we do know are Azeroth and Draenor. I mean, the original shamans on Azeroth were the Tauren and the Trolls, while on Draenor we have the orcs who have been shamanistic, like this shamanistic spiritual race, for thousands of years. And today the situation is a bit different, as shamanism is almost dead on the destroyed world of Draenor, now known as Outland. While shamanism is growing every day on Azeroth and many different races are doing it. Now currently we have various playable races who practice it and that is the Orcs, the Tauren, the Dwarves, the Draenei, the Goblins, Pandaren and the Trolls. Now of course many other races still practice different ways of it but currently I'm also talking about the playable races. Now I won't go too much into detail here about all of the races but I will try to give you the most important information. So first we need to understand what is a shaman, I mean everyone who plays the games knows that a shaman is that guy who can shoot lightning, fire and summon totems, but what is the actual lore behind the shamans? So in the game the power of the shaman is really over exaggerated, just as it is for all of the other races, but don't really mistake the shamans for these spellcasters like the mages, since the shamans they don't really control the elements, they can't like really always rely on them. Now they really see the elements as allies and try to keep the balance between them, while in return they call upon the spirits of earth and fire and air and water to aid them in battle. But of course the elements are not stupid and won't follow them in all occasions, so that is why they are sort of unreliable, unlike magics like the warlocks where they can always summon on them. Now an example of this would be the shamans on Draenor. For thousands of years they had respected the elements and the elements helped them in return, but that wasn't the case when they just wanted to commit a genocide against Draenei, so many of the current shamans transferred to a more reliable source of offensive magic and they became the warlocks. So in a way the elements abandoned them and they also abandoned the elements, say they weren't really shamans, they just transferred into warlocks and some tried to keep to their roots but it didn't really work. So the conclusion is, unlike warlocks, shaman magic isn't meant to be used for destruction and the casters have to depend on the elements and their decision. However, there are other ways of communicating like the dark shamanism, although that is a bit of a different case. I mean, if you play the game during 5.4, Myths of Pandaria, you might have noticed some of the so-called dark shamans in Orgrimmar. Or in Warlords of Draenor, some of the Warsong Orcs also serve as Dark Shamans, using the powers of the Void. Now, what this means is that instead of establishing their mutual connection, they force the elements into serving them, so pretty much enslaving them in a way. Now, this doesn't really exist within both of the playable factions, and I'm guessing it would be heavily punished if one was found into dabbling into such magic. So, in a way, this is pretty much kind of a Warlock version of the Shaman. Now let's cover the races quickly, starting with the Horde. So I already talked about the Orcs, but they are one of the main shamanistic races in the Horde, who have been doing it for quite a long time. Now we also have the Tauren, who are generally spiritual people and have a connection with the Mother Earth itself. After that you also have the Trolls, who are mostly just witch doctors, but are still like similar to the Orcs in a way. And lastly you have the Goblins, who are a completely different case compared to all the others. And just for the sake of not complicating it, I'm just going to say they don't really have a traditional relationship with the elements and they sort of make almost these trade deals with them. And also their totems are mostly their own engineering infused with the power of the elements in order to give the casters the power. If you want to learn more details about it, you can either read it or check out some of my lore Q&A videos. I believe I named a video with, with this exact topic so you can hear more about it. I really don't want to make this video too long. <laughs> castle of the goblins. Now that is mostly the horde side. Now on the alliance side you have the Draenei who got the powers recently 
and aren't like these long time shamans like the orcs. Difference with them is that they still have a connection with the light while also being a shaman, so they're almost like a shaman paladin thing. Now the reason for that is because the Draenei, as people are connected with the light, it's like their oath, so they have to worship the light. Not as much as paladins, but they still have it in their lives. Now on the lion side you also have the dwarves, who can be from multiple clans now, but they were mostly from the wild hammers who had like a long connection with the elements before, and really everyone knows the wild hammer dwarves as these outdoor dwarves that cared about nature, unlike the other dwarves who were into mining, crafting and all sorts of that stuff. And lastly you have the Pandaren who are a neutral race, and it's pretty logical for them to be shamans, as you can tell from Pandaria that they're very peaceful and spiritual people that care about the land they live in and they also care about keeping balance of the elements and the nature and all that. They aren't like nature freaks in a way like the Torrent for example or the Night Elves but they really care about the balance of Pandaria and even on the Wandering Isle as well. Now they aren't really a shamanistic society like the Orcs for example but you can still find shamans among them. Now before I end the video let's just talk a bit about the specs, I won't really go too much into detail so pretty much in game you know we have the elemental, enhancement and restoration shamans, although that really isn't too important lore wise as all of them just use the elements and pretty much like either of being offensive or just <laughs> for restoration. Now sometimes this depends like the specs depend for the other races but for the shamans it's kinda similar in a way. Now what is most important to remember though is that there are multiple elements like you have the water, earth, fire and all that and a lot of shamans work on all of them and then they usually just master one it doesn't mean like they lose the powers of the others but you have like a stronger relationship with the other one but they still keep the relationship with the others now usually most like new shamans have to be in touch with all of them and stay like that but like advanced sort of shamans just master one and still keep a connection with them and it, that is kinda essential as they can call more powers from that exact help Alright and lastly just before I end this video, I know I said it before but this is like the last thing. Let's talk a bit about the personalities. Now I won't give you certain examples like I gave you before. And this is just going to be like a quick example of a shaman because all of this really varies in races and I can't really just give you these guidelines. And if you want to watch like a race specific guide, you can find it on my channel to understand how races work. So for example if you want to be a troll shaman, just watch a troll video and then this one. And then you can kind of make a personality for your character. But pretty much shamans usually have sort of a specific personality that doesn't really depend too much on the race like the others and that is just being calm, patient and wise. Drektar now like this current Drektar and Troll are perfect examples as they aren't aggressive, they're respectful and they kinda see the bigger picture. Of course you can always be this aggressive shaman but just try to think through the eyes of your character and realize what he has been through and that he has sort of been enlightened and he has seen what others haven't seen and kind of sees the bigger picture with the entire world and he doesn't really care about all these wars, he cares more about the entire world itself. So being wise is quite an important thing as a shaman. Alright that is all here for this video, thanks a lot for watching and do leave your suggestions on what you would like to see next. And also what you think about this new video format, as I do want to cover all the classes, just like I had covered all the races, so then you can have like a complete guide for your character, like race and class. Also if this video helped you, feel free to like, favorite and subscribe as it really helps out the channel and keeps all these videos going and the channel and all the content improving. And thanks a lot for taking your time to watch this video and see you next time.